Fran Harris. Welcome to the Fran Harris Show. So today we're going to have a special guest on later, but right now we're going to be talking about something that's really near and dear to my heart, something that's been a part of my business strategy for over 12 or 15 years, and that's webinars. So I don't know how many of you have been around the, the, the teleseminar, the, web, the webinar area in the last 20 or so years, but webinars have become huge and so I want to talk a little bit about how to get webinars incorporated into your strategy now the first thing I want to say is that when I did my first teleseminar probably I don't know maybe 17 years ago that technology was really exciting because you could get people from all over the world on people from all over the country on and you were sitting there on the telephone teaching coaching selling whatever you were doing and it was a very exciting time now, as we're in 2013, what's happening is that technology, of course, has evolved, and therefore we're looking at a lot of different things and capabilities for your business and for your message and different ways that you can monetize the things that you want to do. So today on the show, I want to talk just briefly about why webinars should be such a huge part of your strategy. So Google Hangouts is what we're in right now, and this has allowed us to do live shows and fun things like that. But webinars give you the opportunity, of course, to, to spread your expertise, to monetize your message, to teach, to create your own online university. And as you can see, if you start to kind of just look through your email box, I'm sure you'll see lots of things talking about when well, we're doing a live webinar on GoToWebinar, or we're doing, here's a replay for that. And so a couple of things you want to think about as you're considering doing your webinar. First of all, I always talk to people about the whys of their webinar. A lot of people are really intimidated by public speaking for reasons I'm still not sure why people are, are intimidated by public speaking. It's one of the greatest fears out there. Well, webinars take that fear away. Webinars give you the opportunity to be completely anonymous if you choose to and do your teaching, do your speaking all from the comfort of your home or on the beach or wherever you want to go. All right, so that's the grand introduction for webinars. Let's talk about what a webinar actually is. It is a seminar that you teach or take from the web. That's pretty much it. And so most of you have, have been on a webinar, you've been on a seminar, you've been on a teleseminar. What's great about doing webinars is that it gives you that added level of contact and connection with the people who are watching you, right? So folks who may be listening on the phone, what was great about doing teleseminars is that you could be in your car, you could be in the grocery store, you could be wherever and you can be listening to it. What webinars allow us to do is to do what I'm doing right now, so look at the camera and talk to you about whatever my topic is. All right. So if you want that extra level of connection and extra level of contact with your, with your viewers, with your list, with your audience, then webinars are the way to go. Okay. So let's talk about three different ways you can incorporate webinars into your business. And I mentioned a couple of them at the top of the show. But one of them, of course, is to establish credibility. Okay. Think about all the things you buy online, all the things you do online where you never come in contact with the people that you meet. I've bought hundreds of thousands of dollars in products with people I've never physically met, right? But I've seen those people on a webinar. I've looked into the camera and seen them do exactly what I'm doing with you today, where they've, they've been teaching or sharing their expertise through the camera just as I'm doing right now. So it allows you to kind of break down some of the barriers to communication with the people that you, you do business with, whether that's folks that you're outsourcing with or folks who are buying your products or people that you're teaching with, it breaks all of that down and adds a completely new level of connection and, and personality, if you will, to what would otherwise be a barrier because of technology. So, of course, establishing credibility is going to be a great way that you can use webinars because, again, it allows you to get very personal with people, allows you to get to know them as best as you can, through a screen, okay? So credibility is one of them. Expertise I like to talk about. I talk in my program called Made for TV that producers call me, text me, email me, and they always ask me, do you know an expert on topic X? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But what webinars allow you to do is to have that platform where you can talk to people for 10, 20, 30, 
50 an hour or two hours. You can do a complete training completely from the comfort of your home or your office. And you start to establish that credibility. People start to, if you're talking about a specific topic, people start to know you due to that topic. People start to associate that topic with you simply by the sheer virtue that you've actually taught a webinar on that topic. Okay, so you can establish credibility, you can establish expertise. Now some of you are saying, okay, so what if I don't consider myself an expert? And my thing is you don't have to know everything about everything or about that topic to be able to teach a webinar on it. You can do lots of things including interviewing experts. So let's say you wanted to do a, a webinar series on child care, you know, child obesity or something like that. Well, maybe you don't have that specialty in your toolbox, but if you went on the web and found experts who knew all about obesity and, and the occurrences in children, then you could do a webinar on that based on that series. So now you've got an interview every month where you're talking to someone about your area of expertise, only they're the expert, you're just bringing the expert to the market. Okay? So it's credibility, that's expertise. And then the third way, well, I'm going to talk about more than three, but the third way is really to sell. So think about all the companies out there that are using services like GoToWebinar or GoToMeeting to connect with the people in their company. So you can actually create demos. How many of you have bought things online, whether it's software or courses, and to get to that shopping cart, you actually had to see a sales demo of the product. Well, so you can do the same thing with your product. So whether you are a fitness trainer, think about if you were attempting to, to create more clients for yourself as a therapist or a personal trainer or a doctor or a chiropractor, whatever. That's, really, there are no limits. If you're attempting to create some level of expertise and connection with your audience in the attempt to sell them something either right then or later, then webinars give you that opportunity. So you're there. You're teaching you know, how to do the perfect yoga stance or you're talking about how to avoid going to the doctor or you're talking about putting on makeup or you're talking about tying a tie. Well, basically a webinar gives you the opportunity to create that sales demo right there on the spot for the folks who might be buying your product. Okay. So there are no limits. And so some of you who are thinking, okay, well, what if I don't want to be on camera? What if I'm not a camera hog like you, Fran? <laughs> what if I don't want to get on camera and talk to it and pretend that there's an audience there? Well, guess what? You don't even have to do that. You can actually do what's called a screencast. So in other words, what you would do is to create a PowerPoint. You might create, if you're a Mac person like I am, you might create a keynote presentation. And within Google, you know, within Google Hangout and even some of, some of the other platforms, you just do what's called a capture of your screen. So you would, through the process of that technology, you would project your screen onto your computer and therefore everybody who's watching you in your show can actually see the PowerPoint or the keynote presentation. Pretty cool, huh? So now you've taken away that barrier and I do, I do understand why people are afraid to speak in public. I get that, but this is not what that webinar is about. So now if you're afraid to speak on camera or you just don't want to speak on camera, I mean some days you just want to be in your pajamas and your hair to be all already you don't want to brush your teeth whatever your deal is whatever the reason is and you don't want to get on camera then the computer will allow you to actually do your presentation and you never have to be seen I mean how cool is it to be able to project to a global audience and you never have to be seen so there really are no excuses and you know webinars give you the opportunity as I mentioned to to sell to your audience so let's say you were interested in building your clientele on a, a specific topic and then at the end of your webinar you talk for maybe 30 or 40 or, or 80 minutes or whatever it is and you wanted to sell them something at the end of it. Well, guess what? You've actually spent time with them over the last 20, 50, hour and a half. Now there's a level of rapport that at the end of that you can make an offer. You can make what's called an offer to your audience to say, okay, so if you liked what you saw today and you'd like to go deeper with me, Here's how you can connect with me. I've got this package and, and I'm going to outline it here. Week one, you're going to get this. Week two, you're going to get this. Week three, you're going to get this. Boom. Now you've created business for yourself. You never had to leave your house. You never had to put on makeup. You never had to put on a tie. And you're connecting with your audience in a very different way and on a completely different level.
Okay, so a couple of things to think about when you want to set up your webinar. The first thing, of course, is how do you do this? What is the technology that you actually need to do webinars? Well, there's there are paid webinar solutions and then there are free webinar solutions. So I'm going to give you a couple of both of those. If you want a high-level paid solution to do your webinars, then you can do something like gotowebinar.com. Okay, everybody knows about it. Ninety-nine bucks. You know, different levels that they have there. You can probably get some discounts depending on when you go to go to webinar.com. A solution that I like is called Meeting Burner. Okay, just like it sounds, meetingburner.com. Check them out. But what I'm really loving, and I got to tell you all this because we're doing this right here, right now on this platform, is Google Hangout, which is absolutely completely free and gives you a lot of the same amenities that you would get for GoToWebinar or even Meet and Burner. Okay, there are tons of solutions out there. I'm telling you what I use. I have a GoToWebinar account. I have a Meeting Burner account because, there, again, there are amenities that you're going to get with both of these solutions that the other doesn't give you. But I'm loving Google Hangout for my webinars because it's live. It's, it puts it right into YouTube. You can have it as a private video. You can have it as an unlisted video. You can have it as a public video. You can take the embed code and put it on your webinars and promote it on Facebook and social media and all kinds of good stuff. Okay, so the good good for me is Google Hangout right now. And another thing that you can do in Google Hangout, I'm not going to do a whole demo on Google Hangout, but I'm going to show you some stuff that, that makes it a little bit fun for me because my background is television and, and radio, so I kind of like all the stuff and the toys that come with that. But in Google Hangout, you have this thing called a toolbox. So you're going to hear this in a second. You can put little faces up on your screen like that, which is kind of crazy. You can do, if you're doing something that's kind of fun, if somebody says something that's really cool, which I'm going to do in my show here in a second, you can have some applause, right? Very cool. Stop applauding, please. And then <laughs> you can do things like cheering. Let me hear the cheering. There we go. All right, so you see that's in Google Hangout. Now, of course, the other platforms will probably kind of catch up with all this stuff, but what Google Hangouts has done is to make doing webinars or performances or presentations a little bit more like a show, which is a better fit for me, okay? So just a quick recap before we sign off um, here in a couple of minutes. What we've done, what we've done so far, we're just now joining the Fran Harris Show on this Monday. I'm talking about why you need to include webinars in your business strategy and your personal strategy, for that matter, in 2013. So I've talked about three things you can do with webinars. You can create a different level of credibility, a different level of expertise with your audience because they get to see you over and over and over again, and then you get to use it as a sales platform. So if you are that person who, you know, like a lot of speakers when they first started speaking were going out to audiences, you know, 100 a year, 365 people used to brag about, oh yeah, I'm speaking at 200 events a year. And I think, no thank you. I don't want to be on a plane 50 times. I don't want to be on a plane five times a year, let alone 50 or 100 and 150 times a year. So what webinars allow you to do is to pretty much have your audience come right to your office, right? It allows you to broadcast, to speak from the platform from your office, from your home, from your car. I mean, that's what technology has allowed us to do. So if you were thinking, if you were looking for a way that you could actually start to make money, to create a, a different level of income for yourselves, then webinars have to be factored into the equation because it's just too easy not to do it. And I've already shown you that even if you don't think you have anything to talk about, right, then you can interview experts. You can go out and, and let's say you wanted to focus on a specific niche. If you wanted to, to focus on parenting or single dads or single moms or divorced dads, whatever, there, there's no limit to what you can do. If you wanted to focus on them and you just want to do an interview series, a, web, a complete webinar series on single dads or makeup artists or, or ex-celebrities, whatever, no, no limits, you can do that through the power of the technology that I'm using right now and have no barriers to entry because there's nothing to pay for with Google+. Plus. Of course, I mentioned go to webinar.com if you really want to go for a premium solution or you can go to something like Meeting Burner, which also has a premium solution. But my thing is if you just want to get started in webinars, my recommendation is to check out 
Google Hangout. You can get you can also get a 30 day trial with GoToWebinar.com, and you can get a 30 day trial with some of the other solutions out there. But there's really nothing to stop you from leveraging this to teach, to preach, to demonstrate your products, to network with people, to teach classes. I mean, there's nothing to stop you from doing that. And I've been fortunate to make a very good living by incorporating webinars into my strategy. And yes, like a lot of speakers, I started, as I said, going and speaking a lot of different places. I have clients all over the world. But imagine being able to say, hey, let's do a webinar. Like I have a corporate client right now and they want me to do some team building with them based on my background as an NCAA champion and WNBA champion. They want me to do some team building with them. And normally I would say, yes, let me check my calendar. Or let me see when I can come to wherever you are. But now we're having a different conversation. And so now I'm saying to that client, what's a good time for you to get your people online? You know, what's a good day? I mean, it's webinars and technology have really changed the conversation about how we present and how we speak and the different platforms that we have. So that conversation I'm having now with the corporate client that's way across, the, you know, on the East Coast is not about me getting on a plane. It's about me firing up my computer, them firing up their computers, getting in a room with the big um, projector and me doing the team building thing. And then maybe I'll do a follow up and come there and do like a retreat. But that's what, that's what webinars allow you to do. That's what this technology allows you to do. It allows you to basically spread your message, monetize that message, multiply that message through the power of technology that we know as webinars. Okay? So if you were thinking maybe there's not anything here for me, I want you to start thinking about webinars in a very different way. Okay? I get on here every Monday at 11 a.m. That's the commitment I've made, right? So one of the things you can do is to say, okay, I want to do one webinar a month. Just get started, right? I want to do one webinar a month. And then you start thinking, well, what am I going to talk about for an hour? Guess what? It doesn't have to be an hour. It can be whatever you want. You can do what I'm incorporating into my business is something called micro webinars, right? So there are people who will sit with me for an hour. There are people who will sit with me for two hours. There are people who will sit with me for a whole day. And then there are people who just need a little shot of it. They need three minutes here. They need seven minutes here. Completely fine business model. A very effective business model because sometimes people want to kind of get just that appetizer with you. When they get the appetizer, they're like, okay, I, I want to have a whole meal with you. Like, you know, let's get together. Let's have dinner. So you want to think about your webinars in that way. Even if you... Even if you have webinars that are full length, like I have two, three hour webinars, sometimes I will take nuggets from those webinars and promote them online so that people can get introduced to me. And then later on, whether it's that day or sometime later, they want to get the full enchilada. Now they've had an introduction to me. Okay. So real, real quickly, the last thing I want to say is that there are a couple ways you can do your webinars. You can do them live as I'm doing right now. This is completely live, off the cuff. You know, I got a couple of notes here, but pretty much this all would hit my points. You can do it completely live. Or what I recommend, if you are not the person who likes to do things live, that you do them recorded. So what you would do in that case is you would set up your PowerPoint or your keynote presentation. And you just click record. That's it. You get to script it out. You get to either you like like some of my clients like outline so they can go bullet, 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 bullet. Some folks like to write out every single detail of what they're going to say. If that's you, do that. Keep it scripted. You can go and record that with PowerPoint or Keynote. Um, and then you just put it on YouTube, put it into some of the other video sharing sites, and you just start promoting it. I mean, that's the way you can do it. If, if you don't want to sell anything, don't sell anything. If you just want to teach, then just teach. But get it going. It's always the start that stops most people. So you don't have to get it perfect. It doesn't have to be wonderful. It doesn't have to be eloquent. Just get it going. Okay, get it out there. If you've got a message that you want to get out to the world, if you've got a product that people need to know about because it's going to change their lives, then get it out there. I mean, come on, peeps. Get it out there and just see what happens. And the most important thing that's really helped me to not only change my business but to grow my audience is to have some consistency, right? Right? Have some consistency around your content creation. Like when I first started web doing webinars, I was like, oh, I'm going to do with this, I'm going to do this. And it didn't happen. I mean, come on, it didn't happen. I'm very busy. I'm on television. 
I have a life. I mean, you know, I got stuff to do. So what I decided to do was to say, okay, on this day at this time, I'm going to make an appointment with me and my audience. Okay, whether they show up or not, I'm going to be there Monday at 11 o'clock Central Standard Time. So that's my commitment for the next six months. I mean, that may have to change based on my based on my schedules, but for the most part, I do not miss a Monday morning live show. That was my commitment. So what commitment are you willing to make to change your personal, professional development, or even your financial commitment, your financial reality right now? Webinars are very, very lucrative. And I didn't even get into how you can charge people to actually just attend your webinars. I only talked about the business model of doing free webinars and then offering them something after the webinar is over. But there are lots of different ways that you can do your webinars webinars and make them financially rewarding for you. But my recommendation is just to, if you like what you heard today, get started, right? I got nothing to sell today. By the way, I want to talk to you guys about why people care when people sell things. I don't have anything to sell today, but if I did have something to sell today, it would be about how to create your own webinar package, how to create your own webinar business, how to incorporate it into your, your strategy for this year and beyond. But just because I don't have anything to sell you today doesn't mean you shouldn't get started. I've given you resources. I've given you kind of tips on how to figure out which business model you want to use. And really, it's just about firing up your computer, firing up your, your um, getting a couple of notes in place, figuring out what you want to talk about, your topic, who the audience is going to be, and then just doing it. You're going to get better like everyone who does anything. You start out maybe a little rough. You know, figure out your basic, your best flow, and ultimately you'll do great at webinars. I'm convinced of that. I mean, I've been on webinars with people who've been doing it for 20 years, and it's always rough. And I'm like, come on, dude. But you're doing, they're doing it. And then sometimes, like, I'll have technical glitches during my webinars, and you just flow with it. It's not about being perfect. It's just about getting it going. Okay. So I hope this this uh, show for the for the day has really served you. It's um, about 11.27, and I'm about to interview a live guest on the Fran Harris Show. So if you hung around for the webinar, good, good, then you really want to hang around in the next two minutes. We're going to be live again talking to a very special guest here on the Fran Harris Show. Stick with us.